So let's say we have a curve and we would like to animate it in Blender and then export it out as an FBX, a DLP or any other format and basically play it in any other software that we're uh, making this for. So let's say for example I have this path over here that I would like to have animated. I made this uh, using like simple vertices and just added subdivision. Now let's convert this into a curve right uh, and then in my curve properties normally what you would do is give it some depth and then i would just add another object this time a bezier object and then in this object i'm going to use the other object as a bezier uh, sorry taper profile and this just makes my object taper uh, towards the end okay so let's say this is uh, something that i'm going for and let's just make it a little bit thicker. Okay, so let's say for example, this is what I'm going for and now I would like to have this animated, right? Uh, so normally what you would go over here and make this taper. And now if I basically move this slider uh, from start to end, you can see that this is being animated very beautifully. Now the only problem is it works fine inside of Blender, but if I want to export this out, it won't work in an external software because uh, for when it's exported out, it's converted into a mesh. And this animation, this is meant for a curve with these kind of curve properties. So this is not something that I can take from like Blender to let's say Unity to let's say a GLB or GLTF uh, export file. I can't export this information out, right? Uh, let's just try doing this. So if I over here add a keyframe and then go to my end frame 250, add another keyframe, then uh, let's go back to start frame and then let me just have this to zero. So now it's going to basically animate uh, starting from zero to one. And if I just select this and export this out, And if I now open my GLB viewer and I just uh, move this inside over here, you can see what happens. Right, so uh, nothing happened. Again, our object was not a an object, which is why we didn't get anything. And also our object at frame zero, it's uh, like, it's empty. Uh, so if I go back to frame zero, it's nothing over here. So when it gets expo exported, it's exporting the first frame and it's not exporting anything else and which is why we're getting that empty object. Okay, so now how, how would I make this, uh, animate this in a way that it's exported out inside of, uh, outside of Blender? That's something we're going to do in this vi video. So uh, let me go to the end over here and let me just delete this keyframes. Okay, now let's just, uh, for our easiness, let's first convert this into a mesh instead of a curve because that's what our end goal export is going to be. So let's me, let me just press space and convert this to mesh. If you don't get a search bar when you hit space, just go to object, convert and convert to mesh. Now basically this is an editable mesh that you can uh, manipulate easily. Now, uh, we need to basically animate this in a way that's universally understood and that's basically by using bones. So I'm going to go over here, armature, and create a sing uh, sim single bone. Now, for my snapping method, let's set this to face for now. Or I think volume would also be fine. Okay, then I'm going to go into edit mode, select the, uh, the tail of this bone and let's just place it over here let me just turn this on uh, place this over here then the front of this uh, bone and then let's place it over here so now we have the front and back of it now I'm going to divide this uh, into like divide it once and then I'm just going to move this so this is like the center of this I'm just going to move it on the y-axis I'm not going to change anything else then select everything let's subdivide this again now select this head and 
basically try aligning your um, bones as you're subdividing this this just makes it easier to align your bones with your mesh and because we have our uh, method set to volume it's automatically going to uh, oh it's not aligning it okay so basically it's automatically going to align to the inside of this bone and we don't have to like do a lot of moving around and now let me just subdivide this once more okay so at this point the only thing that you need to be concerned about is the more you subdivide uh, the more bones you're going to have uh, the like the neater your movement is going to be but the heavier your file size is going to be so this is th that is just something you need to be aware of when you're doing it okay so in my viewport display let me just make this in front so it doesn't go behind the objects and let me just start placing my bones now you want your bones to be at an equal distance between each of these bones you don't have to be perfect about it just a uh, good enough is fine if anywhere you see that there's too much distance just subdivide that particular bone into two bones and that would just uh, help with the distance So I think this much is fine. Now uh, let's make sure in our wireframe mode, each of the head um, of your bone is lining up to where the curve uh, has at least one segment. Um, it's just going to make your animation a lot more neater. So for example, over here, this is more towards the middle. So let me just move it uh, more over here. And this is just going to help with the animation. Okay, once uh, these are lining up like almost where they are supposed to be, we can just select our bones, then select our object, go to, sorry, select our object, then select our bones, go to control P uh, and like add with automatic weights. If for some reason it fails, you just need to go and go into weight paint and then just weight, uh, weight paint these bones. So I'm using uh, Blender. 4.0 in this you have to hold alt while you click to select your bones and then just make sure your weight paint is something similar to this so each uh, bone is starting from the segment and ending where the head segment is uh, head segment of the bone is ending so you would just have to paint on it uh, if for some reason it doesn't work but uh, most probably it will work uh, it just sometimes you get an issue with it Okay, so once this is done, now we can basically start animating our object. So I'm going to go to my zeroth frame and I'm going to select all of my bones and I'm going to press I and then I'm going to animate the scale. So I and then scale on the first uh, like zeroth frame. Okay, let me just move this up okay now we're gonna go to frame 10 and over here i'm going to press s0 so i'm going to scale everything down let me just set my method to individual origins just in case and then s and zero so everything is scaled down and then i 
scale so everything is scaled up so basically our um, bone is starting from this point and then it's ending on this point and basically we want this to be in reverse so i want this to be at frame 10 and this to be at frame 0 so we are starting from nothing and then we are having this growth right awesome okay now let's go to our next bone and you can see all of the bones now have this uh, should have this so this should be zero at the first frame and then uh, one at the second uh, like the other frame but this is not happening because we selected all of our bones and we did this all together it for some reason doesn't add the same keyframes to all of your bones okay let me see if we can do it another method so if i select all of these bones and then i go to frame one then alt click uh, hold alt while clicking on these and then set this to zero and then hit i scale and over here i all channels okay so now it's it has done this for every bone uh, it doesn't do it by default but then if you hold alt and you do this uh, it's basically adding this scale value for all of your objects uh, otherwise it just adds it to the parent uh, i think now this is fine okay now we're going to add this to all of our uh, we're going to basically move these frames around so we get a better animation so let's first select our parent um, which is the root phone and then control i to invert my selection and then over here i'm going to press g and then 10 to offset it uh, by sorry g and 5 to offset it by half of the growth animation so at frame 10 my first bone is at like one scale so my bone 2 should start from fifth frame oh sorry it should start from like frame 5 so let let's make this g and 4 okay much better now i'm going to deselect this bone and then again g and 4 now i'm going to continuously do this uh, for each of these bones just keep select uh, deselecting one of the bones and then just move this uh, like five frames Okay, so once all of these keyframes are added, if you would like to uh, make it slow down, you can just scale this by whatever value you want. Let's say I scale this by 2 and now my animation is going to be much, much uh, slower. Or you can, uh, if you want to speed it up, you can just divide it by whatever value and it's going to be a lot more faster. So I would say just stick to this 5 to 10 ratio uh, for all of your keyframes. And once it's animated, then you can mess around with uh, how fast or how slow you would like the animation to be. And once this is done, uh, let's just export this out. So let me just uh, go to my end frame, select my armature and my mesh. And then let me go to export F GLB. And you can see it's going to work just fine. Right, and using the same principle, you can uh, like create much complex animation. So here's the same principle being applied to a more complex object. Uh, this is the model I found online on Sketchfab. Uh, I'll link it down uh, in the video if you would like to try it out. But basically, this is um, how you can apply it uh, into like whatever project that you have in mind. And basically, this animation can now be exported out as GLV, as FBX, or whatever 
and it will work fine in any other uh, software. So if you have any questions, you can just uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, have fun in Blender.